Randall Woodfin, a man that, and who is very core, understands that every person deserves dignity, respect, and a safe place to call home. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. It is truly an honor to be here with all of you all this uh, afternoon. Uh, before I get started, I, I do want to take the time to acknowledge my colleague who is standing here to my left, um, Dr. Daryl O'Quinn. Uh, I don't see you. Where is she? Oh, she's hiding. <laughs> and my colleague, Valerie Abbott. What I can tell you about uh, these two, as well as the other city councilors, we believe in partnership. We believe in making the right decisions to help all of our citizens of this city. And so I am happy to stand with them. I'm happy that they're present. I'm happy that they push me and hold me accountable. And I'm happy that they are here in support of such a tremendous moment in our city and community. Um, I wanna start by telling you a story about me. I moved to Central City as a resident back in 2008. Um, and I stayed in a building called Fix Play. One of the first people this is no story. The first person actually I met was a gentleman by the name of James Williams. Uh, we did not call him by his government name. Um, I knew him, and many people knew him as also man. Um, I consider him a friend. He was very helpful to me. He was kind to me, kind to others. Actually, one time I got locked out of my um, home, and he was the one that actually helped me get back in. That will probably take a longer story to tell. Uh, but the point of me sharing that is that I got a chance to see James, also a man, uh, who lived on the streets in, the city, in our city. Um, I saw more than a person who didn't have a home. I got a chance to build a relationship and a friendship with him. I got a chance to know him, who he was, where he was from, and why he was on the streets. Uh, but he was a good man. He is no longer living with us, and it still bothers me and makes me sad. Uh, but if I, so I continue the story of me, I think about the times I had being a lawyer for the city of Birmingham. I spent the year working at the city jail, and I saw so many men. I saw so many women um, who were entering our, our jail, who couldn't make bond, who received some type of a criminal charge, um, probably for some of the wrong reasons. But one of those reasons was that they were homeless, and that some of the decisions they made led them to our jail. And I thought outside of the opportunity to be a lawyer for the city, if ever afforded another opportunity, how could I help them? And so fast forward uh, to being the coming mayor. Back in 2017, a couple things happened. Before I was mayor and would not tell this story, her and I were actually a part of the TED Talk Birmingham. We got a chance to both tell our story. I shared my story about being on the school board. She shared her story to the community about leading and running the firehouse ministries and shelter. And I got a chance to know her and her heart and be exposed to more detailed work of what this ministry was doing in our community and for the men and women in our community. Community. I won the election, there's a transition period. And then we have a day of service. And on my day of service, I thought it was so important that I actually come not only visit Ann and the people and the staff, but visit the men and the women for the work they're doing. That was literally the, f that was two days before I was sworn in. Fast forward again, there's an opportunity as mayor, as council to help this organization. And here's what I mean by that. I just told you the story of me. Now I want to tell you the story of us. For 37 years, our parents, our grandparents, now us, We've been at the table, we've been on the front, on the forefront, on the front line, in the trenches, helping the least of those. Helping those who are in need of shelter, short-term emergency housing, and providing all other forms of assistance to help those with most need. You all have done so much for this community, not just about today, but over the last 37 years. Your heart, your time, your commitment, your sense of urgency, your compassion, your financial resources. As volunteers, as organizations, 
as faith-based communities, as corporate partners, and so many others. The story of us as it relates to the last 37 years is so amazing about how do we help the least of these. That brings me to now. Many of you all just like me for the last many years, I won't say all 37 because you were somewhere else before it was on 3rd Avenue. You get off on the 3rd Avenue exit and you pass by the firehouse. And that same cringe I have, I know you've had it, when you see our people in our community standing out in the cold on that corner, wishing, wanting to do more. Now we've done more. We as in collectively, all of us, increase the number of emergency beds in our community to help the least of these. I wanna thank you. I wanna thank Ann. I wanna thank Don. I wanna thank the entire staff who, I want a jersey by the way. <laughs> I wanna thank the board members. I wanna thank the fundraisers, co-chairs. I wanna thank corporate Birmingham. I wanna thank our faith-based leaders. I wanna thank the city of Birmingham, my colleagues. But I mainly want to thank the volunteers I've met at the firehouse. My favorite, the young girl or young boy whose birthday it is. And instead of going to Chuck E. Cheese, um, I think it was showbiz when I was a child. Instead of going to Chuck E. Cheese or showbiz, instead of going to a skate party or a bowling party, they decide to spend their birthday at the firehouse. There's a spirit in this community that goes well beyond the adults where children are looking to make a difference to help the least of these as well. Make no mistake about it, history has been made in our city and in our community today by making sure we continue to help the least of these. In our administration, as I close out, we have the words putting people first. What better way? Thank you. <laughs>